Hi guys, I'm just at the start of uh, Boi Vien uh, walking street, one of the most famous streets for nightlife in Vietnam. Uh, it's very quiet, it's uh, early afternoon so not many people around. Traditionally this would be absolutely packed. Even this time of day actually in the past you'd have thousands of people here in the sun. But give it about 6 o'clock and it will be absolutely even, absolutely cool. So welcome to Boy Vien Walking Street guys. This is uh, early afternoon. You can see it's pretty quiet. This place will be kind of busy later from about five o'clock and then well into the early hours of the morning. It's super, super well known Boy Vien. Um, it's kind of the place where all the backpackers used to come. A bit like Koh San Road in Bangkok. But obviously it was closed down for COVID for a very long time. It initially opened up and it was all Vietnamese. I mean, you can still see now there's not many, not that many foreigners around. It's mostly local people. And you can see from the advertisement here, I mean, it's, it's, it's more aimed towards Vietnamese style nights out now. So there's a bit of a tilt, a bit of a switch towards more local style of entertainment. Do you like to come to Boi Vien, Miss Mai? No. No. <laughs> you, I, don't, I, don't, I can't hear anything you're saying because your face is covered. Quite noisy. Very noisy. It's noisy enough in the daytime, but so this street, guys, uh, you can't move. Literally, it's it's packed. Like if you look at some of the older videos from two, three years ago. You'll be able to see this actual street here. It's rammed with thousands of people and you it would take you like probably about 40 minutes to get from one end to another. And whereas today you can walk it in a couple of minutes. In my opinion, the majority of expats that choose to live in Saigon probably come here a handful of times and then don't come back. It's more aimed at tra tourists, travelers who are here for a couple of days, a couple of weeks maybe. But you can get sucked into the culture of cheap beer and partying every night. It's going to cost you a fraction of what it would in the UK. Thailand. Thailand is very different. Um, so Thailand. Let's just say the, the entertainment industry in Thailand is more in your face than, than it is here. Yeah, that does exist here, that kind of massage and, and bar girl. Not so much bar girl, I don't think, but massage. It's definitely a thing here, but it's more under the radar. It's not advertised like it would be if you were walking around, say, Pattaya or something like that in Thailand or Bangkok. In fact, this is, I haven't been here for about two years. I don't really remember. This is quite new for me as well. It's got a military vehicle. You can tell by the blue number plate. Maybe they got some sort of private private party going on in there, who knows. the same uh, cabling problem that you get in Thailand.
I'm getting a slightly uh, <clears throat> shady vibe from this hem. <laughs> People are not so friendly. <laughs> Yeah. This is a, a hem, guys, in Vietnamese. It, translation, rough translation is alley. So you have all these hems all over the, the cities and they kind of lead off, you know, or like, like capillaries from the main roads. And this is where the locals live, shop, eat. And Miss Mai's a little scared, she's sprinting off in front of me here. I like the uh, the little referee in the, in the pink. Or oh, umpire, I should say, not oh, referee. You're good at badminton, Miss Mai. What, are they any good? What do you think? No. No. I just like for some. I think they're pretty good. No. No. This is one of the very uh, one of the very few parks with some greenery that you'll see in Saigon guys um, right next to Boy Vien and Pham Nu Lao unfortunately the planning in Ho Chi Minh City isn't great so it's a difficult city to walk around in and there's not much green space there's something in there I'm not sure if it's a fish the monster, monster of Boivian. <laughs> 